Up, New 74, KCBS. If you ever took one of those ordinary round one-quart ice cream containers, a handful of paper fasteners, a couple of paper clips, some number 36 enameled copper wire, a small piece of silicone or galena, and a pin or two, and transformed it all into a radio set. Well, you're not as young as you used to be. Unbelievably, it worked. You could hear the Paul Whiteman Orchestra and Will Rogers and President Coolidge. How unbelievably primitive your crystal set would seem now. But is it possible that your cat's whisker might still receive a message that simply is not getting through the marvelously sophisticated equipment we have today? Uh, yes, Miss Hastings? It's Mr. Cartwright of National Industries. He wants to congratulate you. Uh, tell him that I'm in a meeting. And you've got four other calls on Well, hold. tell them all I've gone to Outer Mongolia for the afternoon. Oh, yes, Mr. Fowler. What should I say if they ask me why? Oh, tell them I had to buy some yak butter. And, oh, oh yes, uh, Miss Hastings, uh, could you come in? Oh, wow. Uh, now, uh, Miss Hastings, would you mind retyping this letter? It's not very long. I've, uh, you see, I've marked the words that aren't spelled right. Oh, Mr. Fowler, it's not that I spell them wrong. It's just that I leave out the E in all words that have an I and an E. I write receive and believe. I don't know why I do that. Oh, well, maybe we better send you to a psychiatrist. Oh, I'd be afraid to talk to one of those people. Uh, Mr. Fowler... Now that you'll become president of the company, uh, w will you need me anymore? Miss Hastings, what kind of question is that? Well, I thought you'd want a new secretary. Somebody who looks like she might be a secretary to the president. Uh, Miss Hastings, for 24 years we've been a team. When I get promoted, you get promoted. Now, now what's he doing outside? Well, Mr. Davis would like to see you. Oh, Arthur, send him in. Yes, sir. And remember, Miss Hastings, I before E, except after C. Hi, Bert. Busy? Oh, what is this, Arthur? You feel you have to be announced now? <laughs> I don't become president until tomorrow. Uh, yes, tomorrow. Yes, and even then, I'll probably still be the same sweet, lovable Bert Fowler. <laughs> now, what's your problem, Arthur? Problem? Uh, yeah, who says I have a problem? Well, you look like a man with a problem. Do I? Hmm. Well, how are things, Bert? <laughs> well, now that you've deftly changed the subject, I may add I'm being swamped with requests for my bio. Well, two of them, anyhow. <laughs> Why not? You're, you're a famous man. Well, I will be after tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow? Yes, I knew it would happen one day. I said it 25 years ago. Remember, Arthur? Do you remember 25 years ago? Remember what? Oh, you don't have a sentimental bone in your body. Oh, now how can you say that? I'm paying alimony to two wives. We both came here the same week, didn't we? Two raw youngsters just out of college. And we did pretty well. Bert. Uh, yes, Arthur, what is it? Well, I guess there's only one way to say this. You're not going to be made president of this company. What? But... I'm not. The board of directors met last week. The decision was made to name... <clears throat> to name Ron Anderson. Ron Anderson? Oh, you can't be serious. Now, the board wanted me to break the news to, uh... To cushion the shock. Oh, I see. Because we're old friends. Oh, it's quite perceptive and sensitive. Now, everybody agrees that you're entitled to greater recognition and, uh... Well, a special title will be created for you. But it won't be the title I deserve, President. And more money, a lot more money, stock options, bonuses. Yes, thank you, thank you, Arthur. Excuse me. Yes, Mr. Fowler? Uh, take a letter, please. My personal stationery. Today's date. To the chairman of the board. Dear Frank, please accept my resignation effective immediately. Uh, I'll sign it the moment you've finished. But, but you, you, you can't do it. I've just done it. Now, listen to me. Please don't. Just please. Mr. Fowler, did I, did I just hear uh, you say that... No, now, Miss were... Hastings, now, please go back to your desk. I want that typed immediately. Don't you type one word. Now, everything's going to be just fine. You just go out to your desk, Miss Hastings. Now... Now, but the board of directors. There was no board of directors 25 years ago. Huh. 
How high and mighty we've become. We now have a board of directors. Just calm down. I walked into this company 25 years ago, and it was going down for the third time. This, this pathetic little two-by-four fly-by-night. But you, you have to realize... Whose ideas turned this company around? Yours. Whose designs made the difference? Yours. Nobody denies that, Bert, but times have changed, and you... Well, you don't have the right image for the president of the company. Oh, really? Let's talk about images, shall we? Who worked out the circuit that enables this company to create the world's best image on a screen? It's a new ball game. Well, if it is, you can play it. You represent the past. Bert, Bert, you're too old. What? At 53, I'm too old? No, no, it, it's, it's the, way, the way you dress and the, the, the way you cut your hair and... Hey, the way you impress people, you're just... Well, I guess the only way I can put it is that you're... You're just too World War II-ish. Whereas Ronnie Anderson... Ronnie is, Anderson is an idiot. No, no. No, he's not really an idiot. It's just that he talks their language. Whose language? The language of the people who pull the buying strings today. It's the accent on youth. And he sports that long hair, and he, he wears clothes that are called mod or whatever, and... What, well, he's just that fresh, bright, vibrant image the board thinks that this company needs. But he doesn't know one end of a receiver from the other. He, he doesn't have to, Bert. The engineers don't run companies anymore. You know that. It's all in the hands of the marketing people. Well, if you'll excuse me, Arthur, I'd like to clear my desk and go home. Where are you going? You heard me. I said I'm going home. Are you? Tell me, Bert. Where's home? Where's home? It's here. And what's home? This company. It has been your wife, your kids. What else do you have? Will you excuse me, Arthur? <sighs> you gave everything to this company. The company is all you have to show for your life. You can't leave it. But company's leaving me, Arthur. Ronnie Anderson is a temporary madness that's come over the company. Oh, Ronnie Anderson. Who says God has no sense of humor? You want to go to lunch? Uh, well, Ronnie Anderson's invited everybody to be his guest in the penthouse. I have a previous I... engagement. Well, why don't you go and score some points? That was a low blow. I'll see you later, Bruce. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yes, sir? Uh, Miss Hastings, call the garage. I want my car brought around to the front of the building. Yes, sir. And what are you doing now? Well, I, I was supposed to send out copies of your bio. I think we can forget all that till it's time for my obituary. Uh, I'll take you for a ride in the country. Me, Mr. Fowler? <laughs> Thank you for lunch, Mr. Fowler. Mm. Isn't it a beautiful day? Oh, I can't remember ever doing anything like this before. Anything like what, Miss Hastings? Oh, driving out in the country during the middle of a working day. Oh, the woods are so beautiful. Yes. Now, you, you've, uh, you've been my secretary for so many years, Miss Hastings, and uh, well, I know so little about you. For example, well... Why have you never married? Well, because no one ever asked me. You never married because no one ever asked you. And I never married because I never asked anyone. <laughs> uh, why are all those cars parked along the side of the road? Oh, well, according to those signs, it's a garage sale. Oh, what's a garage sale? Oh, people want to get rid of a lot of old things around the house, so they just hold a sale. Huh, what a coincidence. I'm an old thing that was gotten rid of today myself. You know, I feel an affinity for this place. Uh, let's stop and browse about. <laughs> oh, my. I've never seen so much junk. Oh, usually. You see some old books and pictures. <laughs> you see that stuff over there, Miss Hastings? It's typical of what you'd see in a home about, oh, 50 years ago. Look, there's an old, broken-down, wind-up phonograph. A clothes dummy. <laughs> a coffee grinder. And, and, uh... Mr. Fowler, 
Mr. Fowler, are you all right? No. Oh, no, it can't be. Mr. Fowler, you're so pale. But it's... It's mine. Mr. Fowler, something's wrong. Uh, Miss Hastings, uh, you you see that thing Uh, on the table? It it looks like a round container with some wire wrapped around it. Oh, yes. Uh, See what price is marked on it, hmm? Oh, oh, there isn't any. The woman at the gate. Ask her how much she wants. Oh, Mr. Fowler, you're shaking. Are are, are you ill? No, no. Find out how much she wants. I have to have it. A dollar. A dollar? Well, I'd have given her a thousand. Well, now it's yours. But it was always mine. Mr. Fowler, are are you saying you once owned this, whatever it is, and now, by I don't know what kind of coincidence, you just came across it again? What do you think this is, Miss Hastings? I couldn't tell you. (laughs) It's a radio. A radio? Mm -hmm. Well, it looks more like a carton for ice cream or... Or sauerkraut. <laughs> this was my first design. My very first design. You designed this, Mr. Fowler? My first design. My my first prize. There was a magazine called uh, American Youth. And it offered a prize for the best and most simple design for a crystal set. And, well, I, I submitted this one and I won. <laughs> I was ten years old and I won. <laughs> the magazine printed the diagram for this and youngsters all... All over the country copied their own sets from it. Uh-huh. Just, just think about it. More than 40 years ago, a kid who lived in this house made this radio from my design. Oh, I still remember the prize. Oh, a gold medal. And on it was inscribed, To Bertram Fowler, a great scientist of the future. And it came true. You are a great scientist. Uh-huh. No. No, I never became a scientist. I just tinkered around with gadgets. Do do, do you mean a thing like this could actually work? Oh, sure. Look, uh, put on the earphones. But I wouldn't it need a new battery? No, no battery, no electricity. It works by itself. You see, it's it's just a a coil of wire, a crystal detector, which is made of silicon or galena. Uh, Let's see, we uh, we need an aerial... Oh, we can use the metal clothesline the lady has stretched in her yard. Oh, this will be fine. <laughs> now, now listen through those earphones. Right. Now, what do you hear? Anything? Oh, yeah. I, I do hear a kind of scratchy noise. Wait. Music. Yeah. I, I, I think I hear music. Clearly. Well, listen for yourself. Oh, yes. Uh, may I have those earphones? What? Well, that's... That's the music of Paul Whiteman, King of Jazz. It has been brought to you by the Grand Ballroom, Ritz Carlton Hotel in New York City. Paul Whiteman. Well, it's not possible. And now for the news. President Coolidge said today that he will call for a three-power naval conference in Geneva, Switzerland, to be attended. Mr. Fowler, what's wrong? Oh, is somebody, somebody help me. We need a doctor. Please, oh, oh, Mr. Fowler, don't faint. Anyone would have a right to pass out if he tunes in the news and he gets the bad news of 1927. But why is he picking up that kind of news and that kind of music now? What kind of radio set did our friend Bert Fowler design anyhow? I'll be back shortly with Act Two. There's always news and more on 74 KCBS. I shot an arrow into the air. It fell to earth I know not where, said Mr. Longfellow. But the fact of the matter is, the arrow did fall, finally, to the earth. There is evidently, then, a significant difference between arrows and words. When you shoot or utter or discharge, however you want to put it, a word into the air, apparently it never falls to earth again. It enters the ether and stays there forever. Or does it? 
how else may we account for the fact that Bert Fowler is now hearing words that entered the airwaves more than 45 years ago? You say that you heard an actual uh, uh, Paul Whiteman broadcast. And I heard a news broadcast which could only have been made in 1927. Why? Because it was about the conference to restrict the number of battleships. Mm -hmm. It was called by President Coolidge. You, you've heard of him. I, yes. And you heard all this on that, uh, that, sorry, that ice cream carton? This ice cream carton is actually a variable inductance tuning coil, a crystal detector, and... Uh, look, Doctor, huh? I don't want to get into anything here. I, I know what I heard. Well, when Miss Hastings brought you here to my office, she said that you'd had a very, uh, well, a very shattering experience earlier in the day in your business affairs. Yeah, you could say that. Well, that was one shock to your system. And then you encountered this, uh, this radio, uh, which was made from a prize-winning design of yours. Now, you were only a child at the time, so that's a second shock. All right, but what does all this have to do with what I heard? Well... The present has suddenly become unbearable. And you're escaping back into a beautiful, promising past? Now, what you're saying is that for one reason or another, I imagined all this, hmm? Well, yes, that's what it, uh, that's what it comes to, Mr. Fowler. Because I put on these earphones. I scratched that crystal with the uh, cat's, whis cat's whisker. All I got was static. Mm -hmm. Uh, doctor, am I okay otherwise? Oh, you check out first rate. Hey, listen. Let me know if you raise any more of that 20s jazz, huh? Miss Hasty. Oh, uh, let me take Mr. these earphones Fowler. off. Let me take these earphones off. You're due at a meeting in Mr. Anderson's office. Oh, oh yeah, that's right. You know, uh, Miss Hastings, I. Well, I'm I'm hearing the strangest voices on this old radio oh, of mine. What kind of voices? Well, I don't know. Oh, Mr. Fowler, I I wish I could hear the voices you say you hear. They're there. They're loud and clear. Bert, we're no longer competitive. There's not a company in the world that can match our quality, Ron. Yeah, but we've got to cut costs. We can't. You mean you can't. If you know someone who can produce this quality for less money, well, I'll, I'll step aside. How about less quality? There goes the reputation of this company. Well, don't you worry about our reputation. I have to. I created it. Why didn't you resign, Bert? You know, I'd have resigned if they'd named you president. That would be the easy way out. Well, you'll simply have to find some shortcuts. If you put us back with the rest of the pack, why should people buy our product? That's my job, marketing. You turn it out. I sell it. Just like that, huh? You're not keeping up with the current market. Neither is your friend, Arthur Davis. What about Arthur? Well, I almost fired him today. Why? He has a lot to learn about publicity. That little uh, thing of a jig of yours, that crystal set, just because it won a prize almost 50 years ago, <laughs> he thought it was worth sending word to the press. For that, you'd fire him? Here's that old magazine. It's dead and gone. And pictures of kids and short haircuts and knickers and this crazy-looking carton with all those clips and fasteners. And you're our executive engineer. Ron, you may have missed the point. The image is old-fashioned. The direction is backwards. Nobody cares about yesterday, Bert. <laughs> Mr. Anderson's secretary just called. You're supposed to have a cost analysis ready for the meeting tomorrow morning. Yes, I know, I know. Well, if you don't give it to me to type, 
They won't have it. That's very well put. And I know you haven't even started it. That's right. Now, Mr. Fowler, don't you Zifa think that you ought... and Aletha. Hmm. Zifa is a man's voice. It sounds like a man's voice. And Aletha... Hmm, it must be a woman's voice, but... Who are they? Who are they? Mr. Fowler, should I call back and tell Mr. Anderson's secretary the report will be ready? Uh, Yes, yes, you do that. Or else, well, tell her it won't be ready. Any way you feel. But, Mr. Fowler... And now, Miss Hastings, you must excuse me. Are are you going to listen to that that thing again? Give them a chance. How many chances? How many? One more. One more. You say one more. I give one more. Then they do something even more frightful. The children. The children of today. They are different. There's so little space. So few planets that are green. And cool and fertile. Another chance. Another chance. Neither you and I, we would use the space wisely. What space? What space? Young men and women, they will be different. Wait, wait. 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 Wait for what? Mr. Fowler, are you all right? What? What? Why, what's the matter? Oh, you've been shouting, wait. Wait for what? Oh? Uh, have I? Now, Mr. Fowler, ever since you came across that, 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 that thing... Uh, you look at it as if it's some sort of poisonous oh, snake. It's really a very primitive device. And it gave so many children in less affluent times a wonderful creative outlet. Hey, Wait. Wait, the children, the creative children, are they the ones Zifa and Aletha were talking now, about? Now, Mr. Fowler, you, you have to go upstairs to that meeting. They have been falling for you. Oh, oh yes, yes, the, uh, the meeting, the <sighs> meeting. See where there's a reduction in any of these costs, Bert? That's right, Ron, you don't. I thought we agreed that we would cut costs. No, as a matter of fact, I think we have to increase them. You know what you're saying. Certainly. I'm the president of this company. I set the policy. I am not aware that the board has canceled its commitment to quality. I see. So you want to take this to the board? Absolutely. You're supposed to be the hotshot, but how much ability does it take to sell cheap junk? If you're any good, you should be able to sell quality. I would like to remind you that the board has already chosen me over you. Ah, then what are you worried about? We have to stop. Mr. Fowler, I don't understand you. What are you saying? We have to stop. Stop what? Stop destroying the world. Oh. Miss Hastings, tell Arthur Davis I must see him in my office right away. 
Arthur. I want you to contact the science editors and writers of all the newspapers, magazines, and wire services. Uh, what for, Bert? What for? I'm going to hold a press conference. That's what's for. Well, I... Well, uh... what? Well, uh, have you cleared it with Ron? No, I haven't cleared it with Ron, and I don't intend to clear it with Ron either. Now... You just get these guys to meet with me, say, uh, uh, Tuesday morning. Uh, you'd have to tell me why. And I'd have to, uh, I'd, I would have to check it out. Arthur, I'm asking you to do this for me. Uh, please, Bert. Ron calls the shots, you know that. Sure. Yes, sure. Okay. Okay, Arthur, I'm, I'm sorry that I asked. Look, Bert, I, I am on your side, but you understand my position. Oh, absolutely. And so why don't you leave before we both burst into tears? Yes, sir? Miss Hastings, call the scientific editors of all the newspapers, magazines, networks, wire services, and tell them I'm having a press conference on Tuesday morning at 10. Oh. I know, uh, but he needs some help. Wait, Zena, I beg you, wait. Every day they do further damage, wreak greater havoc, so sorrier destruction. Now, what I have just played back for you, ladies and gentlemen, is the tape recording of voices that were picked up on this old crystal detector. The message is clear. The world is in danger. It will be taken over by another race or kind or call it what you will, unless... unless what? What, what is, what is, is this guy? No, wait. No, wait, please. Don't go. Listen. Listen to me. Please listen. There's almost no time left. We're running out of time. Now, please, Mr. Oh, Fowler, you time. can't get so excited. They don't Mr. believe Fowler. me, Miss Hastings. They don't believe me. Well, do you believe him? The air of the night is filled with voices, and not all of them are heard by everyone. It is said that some men hear the rhythm of a different drummer. What about the rest of us? If we do not hear that drummer, does that mean he doesn't exist? Right now, all we're sure of is this. You exist, and I exist. And I shall return in just a few moments with Act Three. Now back to Mystery Theater on News 74, KCBS. Easy-going, amiable Bert Fowler is suddenly cast, or he seems to have cast himself, in the role of a prophet of doom. A role that is certainly alien to his nature, but one that he seems powerless to reject. Prophets of doom, historically, don't do very well. Indeed, most of them come to a rather unfortunate end. Is this the fate that awaits our Bert Fowler? Uh, gentlemen, uh, this meeting was called originally to acquaint this board with some fundamental policy differences between Bert Fowler and me. But that is insignificant now. Anyone who has read the papers, who has seen or heard the news broadcasts, is aware of the fact that Bert Fowler has made this company a laughingstock you had no right to call a press conference. Gentlemen! Gentlemen, please listen to me. We must put a stop to this. Put a stop to what? Put a stop to this exclusive pursuit of our own private interests. And what does that mean, Bert? We are in danger. Of what? Of running out of time to save ourselves. From whom? 
Well, from home. It's here. You can hear it on this crystal detector. Look, Bert, all of us have clamped on those earphones. All of us have have, have humored The you. voices I'm... are there. The voices are clear. And so I can only conclude that you do not wish to hear them. Gentlemen, I recommend we relieve Bert of his duties as chief of engineering and design. And retire him on his very generous pension. Now listen, we have to devote ourselves to peace, to the betterment right, of the... Bert, you're out of order. Now why don't you just oh, leave quiet? Take your hands off of me. Bert, for your own good, I'm only... Take your hands, hands off of me. Bert, I want to... Not so good, Mr. Fowler. Oh, I don't know what came over me, Doctor. Huh? A fine crusader for peace you turned out to be. You slugged the first guy who disagrees with you. Yeah. Doctor, what am I doing here in this hospital? Well, you're going to be observed. What does that mean? Oh, well, this will give you a chance to cool off. I will write a high-sounding report filled with all kinds of technical statements that no layman could understand and no two doctors would agree on. I do hear these voices. Yes, of course. Then then you admit they exist. I agree that you hear them. Oh, doctor, what am I going to do? Face reality. What I hear is real. Well, there are many realities. And the problem is you have to get along with the one that's popular. Now... The voices you hear are your voices, Mr. Fowler. They remind you of a happier time. Now, I am not talking about the news and the music. I mean, I mean, Zetha and Aletha. Ah, well, Aletha and uh, Zetha. Yes, A to Z. See, that's how you see your life. It's completely fouled up. There's no wife, no kids, no real fame. You know, it's a... Uh, a brilliant potential that was never realized. That's how you account for it. Bert, I'm on your side. I think the whole thing is absolutely wild. According to Aletha and Zetha, the young people of my generation should have turned things around. I guess we... I guess we only made them worse. How about your generation, Doctor? Well... We make a lot of noise. But we'll get older, too. But, Doctor, if we do nothing, the world will come to an end. You want to know what I think? I think the world came to an end a long time ago. Welcome home, Mr. Fowler. Oh. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Miss Hastings. The company told me I should stay on as your secretary. <laughs> That's one of the bonuses you get at the end of a rat race, assuming you've been one of the bigger rats. Although I I don't know what my duties are. Well, you come to the apartment every day at nine, and you're going to put in a full day's work. That is, unless you'd rather go get yourself another job. Oh, no. No, Mr. Fowler, I, I'll never leave you. I'll stay as long as you want me. Ah. Now, Miss Hastings, all our lives, we've been looking out for number one. Uh, you follow this? Uh, yes, sir. And so, despite all the other theories, that is the basic reason the world has gone to hell. Uh, do you agree? If you say so, Mr. Fowler. Yes. People have to start looking beyond themselves. We just have to do things that will... that will... Turn the world around. Uh, yes, Mr. Fowler. Now, this is something that has to begin at the top. Once the leaders understand what their true mission has to be, we can save ourselves. Now, I've drawn up a list of important people. After all, I'm... I was somebody myself. There's no doubt about that, Mr. Fowler. I have worked with people in government, in the military, in industry, and not just here, but also abroad. And I'm going to put it to these people. Now, here's the list. And I want you to put through some calls for me. <laughs> Have Admiral Chadwick on the phone, Mr. Fowler. Oh, oh, thank you, Miss Hastings. Uh, hello, George. Uh, you got my letter? Uh, hmm? Uh, what do you mean, what's the punchline? But no. No, 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 no. I'm serious. We all have to unite against this new menace. 
We have to change our self-centered thinking. Uh, I'm not George. George, you know I'm not crazy. I... I... Uh, hmm? Uh, oh, oh, sure. Oh, yes. Yes, we'll, we'll get together for lunch one day. All uh, right. Bye. Ah. Uh, well... At least he returned the call. I'm sorry, Mr. Fowler. Mm. Who else have you tried? Oh, Mr. Cartwright of National Industries. He always seems to be in a meeting. M- Mr. Taylor's out of town. I-, I I, just can't get anybody. I'll see who it is. Oh, hello, Miss Hazy. Oh, good morning, Mr. Davis. What? Arthur, sit down. You like a drink? Uh, no, no, no. I, uh, no. Well, what is it, Arthur? I like to think that we're still friends. If you like to think so, by all means. But what you're doing is, well, to a person who knows you, it's heartbreaking. Oh, and what am I doing? You're making a damn fool of yourself. The way you write letters to people and the way you call them on the phone and try to waylay them in the offices. Bert, you you look ridiculous. Huh? Do I? Bert, it's tragic to see you ending up like this. An eccentric, a uh, uh, crack brain, a nut. Uh, and besides, a... Uh, uh, yes? Well, there's the company. Oh, but I've retired. I'm no longer with the company. Your name will always be associated with the company. And so what you're doing is a reflection. What do you suggest I do? Oh, enjoy life. You're still comparatively young. You have plenty of money. Arthur, Arthur, friend to friend, if you were me, how would you go about it? Go about what? Go about getting people to listen. Nobody wants to listen to what you have to say, Bert. I know, I know, but how can I... How can I dramatize my message? You just answered your own question. Dramatize. Call attention to yourself somehow. Uh, Make people listen. Do something. Yes? Oh, I don't. But something that would just explode all over the front pages. Uh, Oh, yes, yes. Thank you, Arthur. But I want you to know we're still friends. Oh, it's heartwarming to hear that, Arthur. I... Well, I I, I wish you'd forget about those those voices. But how how can I forget? I hear them so, so clearly. Now, listen. Put the earphones on... I tried, but I just can't hear. Or you don't want to. Miss Hastings, uh, what are you doing? Oh, I'm typing your letter to the President of the United States and a copy for the Premier of the Soviet and... The Prime Minister of China. Well, just hold off on that for a little while. Oh, yes, sir. Miss Hastings, uh, Miss Hastings, you don't think that I'm crazy, do you? Oh, no, sir. Hmm? Well, take the rest of the day off. I, I'm thinking of trying a different strategy. Yes, sir. Arthur was right. He said I should try something that would explode all over the front pages. Now, uh, what do you mean, Mr. Fowler? I simply have to make people take me seriously. Who's that? What? Bert! You? Yes, Ron. It's me. What are you doing here? Oh, I got lonesome for the place. I thought I'd come by for a little visit. At ten o'clock at night? <laughs> well, you're still here, Ron. Wait. What? What have you got in that valise? What do you think I've got? I'm going to call a security guard. I just saw him. He's asleep. But he's outside. He, 
He won't get hurt. What have you got on that valise? Fuses. Wiring. For explosives. But you're crazy. Nobody wants to listen. I'll have you thrown into jail. Get out of here. I don't want anybody hurt, not even you. This place will go up in 30 seconds. Well, you're a maniac. Run for your life, you damn! You... Who, who, why are you standing there? Because it's my company. I'll stay with it. You're out of your mind. Better run for your life. You... this morning, Miss Hastings? Oh, he seems to be fine, Doctor. Hmm. And where's the crystal set? Oh, he hasn't asked for it since the, uh... I don't think he even remembers it. Oh. Well, hello, Mr. Fowler. Hello? Oh. Yes, uh, Hello, Doctor. Yeah. They you treating you okay? I'm just fine. Good. Between you and me, Bert, uh, is uh, that what it was all about? I mean, you were so completely upset at not being made president that you uh, just blew up the company for revenge? I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, Well, you're lucky to be alive. How you survived that explosion just defies all explanation. She can explain it. Miss Hastings? Oh, that's not her name. No, no, her name is Aletha. Aletha. And she loves me. Oh. You love me, don't you, Aletha? Yes, I love you. Because she loves me. That's the reason the world is still ours. She doesn't want me to be destroyed with everyone else. Oh. Well... All right. Do you understand, Doctor? Hmm? I tried. Yes, but no one wanted to listen. And the world will only last as long as I live. Uh, And afterwards? Aziza and Uh Aliza will take it for their own people. Isn't that so, Aliza? Yes. Yes, Mr. Fowler. That's so. Well, I guess it's up to me to keep you alive for a long, long time, Mr. Fowler. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Doctor. I want to stay with her as long as I can. Because I love her. I... I always loved her. Let's hope he stays with her for a long, long time. Because if her name is Aletha, we are all only safe as long as Bert Fowler lives. Well, you must admit the end of the world could happen any time for any number of reasons. Just add Bert Fowler to the list. At any rate, I'm reasonably sure the world won't end before I can.